and the council approached me to help them design a playground and garden beds up in this reserve. First thing I said, well, we need to recognise Aboriginal area because it is a significant site for them. So um, I approached Robbie Lowe, the Aboriginal elder, and he and a lady from the council and I worked on the design of this. This is called a meringue, which is an Aboriginal word for meeting place. This is the Peak Wurrung recognition stone uh, with a symbolic um, smoking bowl in the middle. Uh, when Robbie does his smoking ceremonies, he brings his own bowl. Uh, he's got a portable one which he uses, but uh, when we opened this site up, we had the mayor here to open it and a big crowd of people and we did the smoking ceremony and a few of us made a few speeches and then the mayor opened it officially so uh, and that officially opened the playground as well so previous to that there was nothing here around the outside you'll see the um, heritage wall which is the only remaining piece of the sale yard site this used to be the Warrnambool sale yards when the sale yards was moved in the 1960s the only piece of the sale yards remaining is a historic wall which we're not allowed to touch it's got historic value, so we've got to preserve that. So that's the only remaining part. After that, our APS group formed in Warrnambool and our first project was to plant out the Swan Reserve with native plants. So that was back in the 1970s. These are the Aboriginal message poles, which children from two of the local schools painted up. Robbie took these into the schools and they painted, he told them the designs they needed to paint and uh, he painted, they, the, the kids painted them. This is our Wilmite Pine bed and that's our Wilmite Pine. One of our members had this growing in a tub at home and quickly outgrew her tub, so she gave it to us to put, uh, put down here. Now, I didn't know whether it would grow here in uh, cold, wet, windy Warrnambool, but we thought it was worth a try. So look at it now though, it's sort of 10 years later and it's just going crazy. This is a Katie Beck, I think it's a hybrid, but uh, it's just a mass of flowers at the moment. The birds just love it. It's beautiful. And the bees too. Look at the bees on it. Uh, I like growing uh, Adenanthus cerisia. It's a lovely plant. That one's fallen over a little bit, so it needs a bit of pruning. But uh, you can get different forms. It's tall varieties, mid-range varieties, and also low-growing ones. So these are supposed to be the low-growing. But um, yeah, they, even then they still get a bit of height in them. Banksia media, low growing one here. Uh, and that's Banksia pillar stylus there, not flowering at the moment, but has, as you can see, flowered quite a lot. So that's a really nice little one too. We've got Banksia grandis, the bull Banksia there. I, I, I saw them over in West Australia when we were there and I just, See them for miles after mile of them, and I uh, had to have one here, so uh, it's done really well. Uh, birds love it, as you can see, and um, yeah, it's been flowering quite a lot. Um, in front of it is Hakia Burundong Beauty, which has got a lot bigger than I thought it would get, but the birds love that too, so, and the bees as well. It gets covered in bees. Behind it is uh, Eucalyptus Woodwardii. I always thought wood warty I wouldn't grow in Warrnambool until somebody told me why didn't you plant one, it, it'll do alright and I did plant it and as you can see it's doing great, they're flowering like crazy. This is our local Corrier Granny's Grave, Granny's Grave is, is a local um, uh, locality in uh, Warrnambool, it's the site where the first uh, European person is buried. There's a few different varieties, two different forms of it and this is one which has got a very um, glabrous leaf, some have got a very rough textured leaf and some are prostrate and others are tall, tall varieties. So this is the scene off the coast opposite Granny's grave and here is Granny's grave. Can't read the writing so well anymore.